Now, I realize that for a lot of us as believers, we easily ask God for more. I need a big house, I need a big shoe, two shoes, five houses. <laughs> I need more of this, I need more of that, I need more of that. Sometimes when we pray, the Lord give me more anointing. I need a lot of anointing, but we, we pray when we don't even understand what we are praying on or what we are praying for. Now, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse number 5, where I want to start, when I stand, the Bible said, Then you will see and become radiant, and your heart will swell with joy. Now, give me, this one says your heart will swell with joy, but let me read this again. Give me the original King James, swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now, give me the original King James, um, your heart shall, then you will, then thou shalt see and flow together and thy heart shall fear and your heart will be enlarged. The word fear is not fear as if you don't want it but fear as in reverence. Fear as in honor. Ow. So, and your heart will be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now, a lot of us pray for more, but I've seen more kill, more destroy, more. If, if, if the devil wants to destroy you, all he needs to do is to give you more than you can handle. Now, one day I heard this man of God say something and I thought through it and I said, it's true. He said, if they, that is Bishop TDJ said, if he leaves what he's been doing for somebody for one month, the best will die. One day, I heard Bishop Dakota say something. He said, he tried to give the church to uh, somebody to handle. I said, Genoa was here. <laughs> the person handled part and left the other part. Like this, the person became more interested in the crusade and forgot about the international branches. The next person you appointed was interested in the international branches and forgot the local branches. So what he then did was that he gave it into denominations and had, let's say, 10 Genovas years whilst he's alive so that everybody was handling an expert. Because, see, the capacity in which a person can handle Will determine the amount that God will pour into the person's life. So when Moses cried to God and told God that I can't bear this bed in the loan, God said, Wow, well, okay, give me 70 people and I'll pour my anointing upon you if they can carry your burden. So it will, it will interest you to know that then it also presupposes that. Moses had a capacity or a heart and large to the extent of doing what 70 people can do. He had the grace to do what 70 people has to do. Now if you go deeper, you will also see that Elijah, Elijah cried to God and wanted to die and he told God that um, I can't bear this bed alone, kill me. And God said, go and anoint Hazel, go and hold, anoint Jehu and anoint Elisha to take your place. That also tells you that the man Elijah was handling a capacity that had to take three people to handle it. Now, Solomon married 700 wives. He, he did 700 weddings <laughs> and had 300 girlfriends. Now, this is a guy, look, I would say that for you to manage to date two ladies, you, you've got to be very smart. <laughs> ladies by nature are smart, I mean. <laughs> but for you to manage to marry 700 and there is peace in your house, how many women will tell me that the man is very anointed? <laughs> 700 and have 300. Now, you forgot one prayer, Solomon prayed to God, that God, then you will give me a large heart. Because the, the level of your enlarged position 
determines how much you can accommodate. So sometimes you can easily pray to God, sing and cry in desperation that God, give me more, I need more, I want more, I want more, 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 more. How much can you handle? Because sometimes what you think you can handle, if God should put it into your hands, is going to kill you. Sometimes, as let me be practical here with you. Sometimes, let me use you as an example. You sow. You sow, right? Um, if you have to sow 2,000 clothes, like what you are wearing, within one week, can you? So you lose my market. <laughs> so, if I want to destroy you, I'll give them to you. You try to do 100. And the hundred, the hemis could not be done with all. Some parts will not be done. So when you present it to me, I present it to the system. They say you are not good. It's not because you are not good. If I'd asked you to do two in a week, you would have done it so perfect that everybody would clap for you. But because you don't have the capacity to handle that hundred, I only brought you the hundred to kill you. So it's not every blessing that is a lot. Are you understanding me? It's not every blessing that is a lot. So sometimes being a millionaire is a death trap. Can take your seat. Being a millionaire is a death trap because the millionaire in you will bring you, will activate your womanizing anointing. The, 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 um, the millionaire in you could, to, could activate your spirit of pride. If you want to see people's real heart, give them position. Position has a way of making people show who they truly are. So now, most often we ask God to fill us, make us better. And I'm on this thing because we are in a season of this amount of prayer as a church. And I've been talking to you on going on a date with God and also, and I'm still continuing in this aspect. Because you see, the problem is that you can pray to God that God give me more. But the truth is that you have what it takes to get that more. So he said that thou shalt see and flow together and thy heart shall fear and be enlightened because your heart because the abundance of the sea. Now I spoke to you that in the spiritual realm there are levels in ministry or there are levels in the anointing. There is the cup level. Fill my cup, Lord. Nonsense. God doesn't fill cups. That song is not correct. That was before Christ. Jesus said, he that believes in me, out of his belly shall flow a river. You don't... You see, he didn't say it will... The river, no, no river comes from upon you. It, it comes on you. It's, it's within you. So he said, he that believes in me, out of his belly shall flow a river. The woman at the world came with a cup because he's not born again. But when you believe, he that believes in me, out of his belly. When you believe, your belly, when Christ becomes, comes to stay in you, you no longer need a cup. You are a river. And the woman was not even coming to a river. He was coming to a well. Jacob dug a well. Abraham dug a well. The modern day, the believer of today does not need to dig a well. The, um, the believer of today has a river in him that the believer must tear so that the river will generate power. You are not here at all. Yeah, I know you don't understand me. But let me go on. Can I go on? So, um, there is a cup level. There is the well level, there is the stream level, there is the spring level, and there is a river level, which is a sign that the Holy Spirit is inside you, and then there is the sea level. The sea level is like the overflow portion. So if you read the Bible very well, in the book of Ezekiel, it said that as I entered into the, um, the sea, when the sea was at my ankle, when the sea got to my knee, when the sea got to my waist, when the sea got to my neck, so the higher, deeper you go into the sea determines the kind of fish you catch. The deeper you go into the, the deeper part of the sea. I always say that at the seashore, you find the panla. The catastrophe boys. But if you want to catch the whales, 
If you want to catch the shark, the big fish are in the deep waters. But here is the Bible saying that because your heart is enlarged, the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Why? Because you have the capacity to handle the abundance of the sea. So, in moving on, I will, it will take me to my central scripture again, which is, um, let's go to John 14. And in John 14, the Bible, Jesus was speaking and said, are we here? Hey, you are quiet too. Don't worry. You will, be, you will be happy very soon. 17. Okay, give me 16. He said 16. But I will pray the Father and he will give you another paracletos, another helper. The word helper is like the same helper you get as a marriage partner. That word helper is like you are married to a mar- somebody. It's the same word that he may abide with you forever. So the, the level which is called abiding with, he is with you. Some say he is with you. Now, right now, you are with somebody. You are sitting with somebody. So, God, um, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, the first step is that he is with you. Now, you read the Bible and you see that, especially the patriarch, someone like Joseph, that was, and the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with you. I was reading this story I said yesterday and I was so much enthused that Joseph was so excited about being a houseboy. Somebody who dreams of being a prime minister, how can you be so excited about being a houseboy in Potiphar's house? Because the Lord was with him. Now, if they say the Lord is with somebody, how do we mean the Lord is with somebody? How does the Lord be with somebody? Now, if, if somebody is, um, most of you people go to place and say that um, I expected God to deliver me and God didn't deliver me. Because we feel like we've been singing songs like um, God will come. Like I, I was saying in the first service, soon, soon, kum, kum, bra. he shall come. But the truth is that he's not coming, he's there. Someone who is there, why should he come? The truth is that he's there, but you have not acknowledged him. You have not done what? Acknowledged him. So, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What's your name? What's, what's this one's name? Is she sitting with you, but I don't know her name. So, you can be close to the Holy Spirit, but you don't know the person. And... It is by you acknowledging, say, oh, I am so, so, who are you? Then we are now talking. But the truth is that the believer is born again, has received the Holy Spirit. But what is happening is that we don't know we have the Holy Spirit. So what we keep asking is that, come Holy Spirit. And it's an insult to the person of the Spirit. Because why, where should the person come? The person is here. The person is here. And where, where is the person? From the beginning, he is with you. Now, David said, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come on. So may God be with you. Now, Jacob, the Lord was with Jacob and he succeeded. The Lord was with Joseph, he succeeded. Now, how does the Lord be with somebody? Now, I always say this thing that everybody, whether you're a believer or not a believer, you have the Holy Ghost working with you. Because if, if you want to steal, something tells you don't. Who is that person saying you don't? In the Holy Spirit. You are, you are not born again. So many people are not born again, but they know what is good and what is bad. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that makes you know what is good, and the evil spirit is the one that makes you know what is bad. But after a while, if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit for a long time, now the Holy Spirit starts on, is not talking again, and now all you hear is evil, so you become an evil person. Am I, with, am I with somebody here? So now the Holy Spirit is with you. He walks with you. He talks with you. He is with you. But if he's with you, you need to acknowledge him. So um, the Bible said, my son, um, um, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your body for their life to those who find them and health to their flesh. So now if you don't discover 
who is working with you, you won't discover life. And if you don't discover life, you feel like something is missing. Let me give you an example. You are very sick. I bring medicine. I say take. You say you won't take. And when I give you the medicine, you do this. Then you throw it behind the bed. And then you drink the water. And you tell me that the medicine is not working. And so I've been serving God. God doesn't work. I serve God. I go to church. This thing, it doesn't work. It is not true. It doesn't work. The problem is that you are not ex- even experimenting with what you have received. You can't throw away the medicine and say the medicine doesn't work. And again, if you are sick with, let's say, malaria, and they give you medicine, you drink it today. They say take it three times a day. You drink money. And you don't drink again. Two weeks time, go and take one. Then another one. Three weeks time, go and take another one. <laughs> Very soon, the, the, the uh, parasite, the malaria thing in you will grow their system. Now, if you take the medicine, it doesn't work. You need a higher dosage to come into your system, to clear your system. So sometimes, when you try just playing with God, you play God. You are not hearing me. You play God. You play God for six years, and now you become very serious. By the time you become serious, the same principle that used to work for you doesn't work again. So first, we will just lay hands on you, and you'll be okay. Now we have to lay hands and lay our stomach, and lay our legs. First, one person can pray for you. Now you need to draw Bible. You know what is the drum Bible? <laughs> That's when the whole congregation is asked, pray, and then the whole congregation is praying for you because one man's prayer doesn't work. <laughs> we are congregational prayer. Oh, amen. amen. So the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now the truth is everybody has their understanding. Look, everybody has your understanding. What time should I close? Some of you want me to close at 11 because you have a meeting. Some want to close at 12. Somebody they wish they will stay here the whole day. Everybody's understanding is different. Today, when we woke up in the morning, everybody understands is different. Some decided to dress. Some decided not to dress. I know what I'm talking about. Some didn't dress. You are wearing clothes, but you know you are not dressed. <laughs> let, me, let me go. On. So, everybody has some what he calls understanding. Some decided to make up. Some decided not to make make up. Or is it true? It's not true. Some decided not to bath. Oh, amen. I think I'm not speaking the truth. So we all have some understanding. We have biological understanding, mental understanding, what our teacher taught us, what we think is good, what we think is best, what our experience tells us. I've been through this. I know that this is how it works. God said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Now, if you don't acknowledge him, then he will do what? He will not help God. Say, if you acknowledge him, then he will direct your path. So your path is not directed because you have not acknowledged the person who is with you. Now, if you are found of arguing with a man of God, be careful. I remember I was talking to somebody, I don't need to give details, years ago about something that was going to happen. The person argued. And so because the person argued, I know it's, it's good to find out the truth, but the person argued and I just kept quiet. It was when the person was in trouble, the person now remembered how about you said it. Only this Friday, I also called this person telling him about something that will happen. And this morning, we had a sad news about a man of God who is dead. I told this person Friday evening, I called. I said, I'm not feeling alright. And he was like, well, cool it down. Only for this dawn, it happened. And you see, the truth is that when you argue, you don't accept. When you argue, you don't do what? Yeah, when most of you argue about the will of God, what happens is that you are trying to bring your understanding in comparison to the things of God. And let me tell you that our understanding is too, is too I don't know the word to use it. You think if I walk in my understanding, I'll be where I am. Oh, forget it. Forget it, crap. Some of the steps I take, I was telling somebody that I have come to believe that 
there's there are there are there is there is two people forgive me maybe i don't know you but forgive me i think there are two people in this world who really respect what i say one is my wife and one is pastor david <laughs> forgive me if maybe i don't know yours because for you to see me joke laugh and still say something and for you to take it serious god has called you because i'm not a type who I want to tell you, does I speak King James English? I'm speaking King James, so you think that hey, you know why? Maybe I also say Pastor David and Pastor uh, my, my wife because uh, they've known me from when I was not Pastor David, like when I was not a man of God. He saw me when I was drinking and smoking and <laughs> misbehaving. When Pastor David went to Form 1, he had my history in his school. I was in this other college. I had my history in his school, Agri Memoria. Somebody wanted to punish him, and I got him and said, Tell him that you are my brother. The guy was called Bones. I said, Tell Bones. And when Bones heard that Pastor David is my brother, he treated him with respect. I've left the school a year or two, but Bones remembers me very well. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it is it is interesting to walk with a Holy Spirit that you don't see, but it says he directs you. You don't see, but he directs you. So sometimes someone will tell you that how did you make yourself by the grace of God? Say, which grace? What did you do? And the person will tell you exactly what he did. You do something, you don't get results. The person did this, he did that. Did. The other person did not tell is the disposition of his or her heart. There was a, a level of enlargement in his heart to handle that capacity, that which you don't have. You can you can say the same prayer Jesus prayed. Knew the way he knelt. Get some of the result, but not all the result, because there's something these eyes that not see. Is I call it the level of the enlarged heart you have. The ability, you see, some of us have a heart condone a lot of nonsense. If you want to go very far, you need a heart that can condone a lot. You need a Peter who will still believe in you, but will still be sleeping at every prayer meeting and still call him your head of disciple. It's not easy. Every prayer meeting, this guy will sleep. And he won't sleep alone. He will sleep with the other two. When you leave the disciples for him that you are going to die, you will come. By the time you came back, he and all of them have gone fishing. And he still will say that he's still your head. Not me. If I'm God, the last person I will choose to become a high priest is Joshua. Um, this thing, friends, Aaron. You, Aaron, they leave church for you just 40 days. By the time they came, they've, you've shared all the ladies among yourself. And they are all drunk and they were all naked dancing. And you turn a golden calf. And when they said, Moses came, who is on the Lord's side? Guess the first person to change. Aaron said, I am. And God said, make him high priest. If he knows how to make these people go naked, he will know how they must serve me well. Make him high priest. And Moses said, I don't get it. How can he be the high priest? This guy is no good. This guy is no correct. If you want somebody, you know somebody. God said, if you think you are qualified for all of you, bring your walking stick. Let us put into my presence and let us see by morning who will be the one. By morning, everyone's rod had battered and fly because there is a hard position that he operated in that the other people don't know. I think I'm not teaching you something. So something can just somebody's lifestyle and say that well, oh yeah, the boy any power, but the person is going on. Me, I'm holy. That's what you think. You are holy with that capacity. You don't have debt. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Yes, your understanding says this and that and that. Your understanding is based on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If I tell you how we manage church accounts in Bridge, one day I'll let them come and talk to you. You will marvel. It is not the way people handle their account. That's why we're able to build this church building. Our way of maximizing church account is weird. That's why I've had a lot of treasures I've sacked them. Because they want to use biblical method to do church projects. It doesn't work. 
it doesn't work. How can you have small money? You want to build church building. The money you have is not even 1% of the building. And you go and dash all the rest of the money and say, let's start. The day you finish dashing, you say, let's dig foundation. It doesn't make economic sense. Because I heard those people who said they were building their church, forgive me, I heard, I, you know, we need 200 and something thousand to do our roof. I was praying to God. Me, Lord. I need this money. Touch has to do. The Lord said, go here, go here. I go to YouTube. I hear a man of God say, I don't know why. I want to tell you something. Do you know that Paul in the church, church building, the Lord's garden, the roof is $60 million. I said, God, let me listen again. I'll go back. I said, the roof is how much? $60 million. And I said, here am I. A couple of days, 200,000. Can I see this? I'm in prayer. Somebody's roof is $60 million. If you compare that one and you compare, you see that master. Why is God giving someone $60 million for a roof? And I have to fast and pray for 200,000. Can I see this? That's why you know that we are all called, but capacities are different. So how do you get that kind of capacity? It's easy. If you go and meet that man of God and you lay, you go and kneel down and he, you so see that your two cities into his life and he says, God be with you. When he says, God be with you, what he simply says is that the grace I walk in should walk with you. And all of a sudden, you see that doors are opening for you that you, you don't know how these doors are opening because it is his level he has walked in. The capacity he has moved into, that he's saying they should be with you. But you are so wise, you will chop your two cities and be poor. You don't understand me. I remember we, I went to a man of God and I said that, man of God, I greet you. Bishop Takeba, I said, I greet you. I said, you are the mayor of this area. So as you are the mayor of this area, and this is our little talking from the church, I give you a digging fee. He said, what for? I said, we are about to church, start our church, but this is our digging fee. He said, but I'm not the chief of the area. I said, spiritually, you are my chief. You are the spiritual big man. You, you are the first person to build a mega church in this area. That money was nothing. And I came back and I said, let's take foundation. And Brother Daniel will tell you that when he saw the foundation, his heart missed a beat. And he said, oh God, is my pastor okay? What he was thinking, I'm happy he didn't tell me because that was his understanding. The accounts people will also tell you that they don't have to come and tell me there's thing, you don't have to come and tell me there's no money. That is your understanding. You see, most often we apply our understanding, but how do you acknowledge God in what you do? It is when you ask yourself in every situation you are in that God, if it was you, what will you do? I'm acknowledging him in this level. So you move in on in life. I want to be hit you. Because you've done something bad to me. I want to hate you. But I ask myself, if I am Jesus, or if you were Jesus, will I slap you? And so I'm saying that Jesus should never do that. Who says this? Read Mark chapter 6. He says, blessed is he who is not offended in me. Because some people became offended by Jesus' action. Judas became offended that a woman gave all the offering to Jesus without giving, putting it into the church treasury for them to use it for church projects so that he can use some for himself. So he says, blessed is, is the one who is not offended in me. So people can be offended. Even Jesus offended people. If he didn't offend them, why did they people say stone him? But you see, when you come to a place of, you're asking yourself, everywhere you are, if I, if I, you have to acknowledge God. Should I take left? Should I take right? Should I do it? Lord, which day should I do it? When should I do it? How do you want me to do it? Why should I do it? Because you see, the capacity must not be your capacity. It must be his capacity. And whenever you depend on God, it's like you are leaning on his ability to take you through. When you depend on your understanding, you are depending on your ability to take you through. Trust. Okay, they brought it. Blessed is the one who is not, who is not offended because of me. This is Jesus speaking. So Jesus offended people. <laughs> Jesus will never do that. Read your Bible. A man who takes a cane. One day I'm going to teach about it on this series on prayer. And reaches people in church. And tells them my house must be a house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. Most of us, our life is full of stealing. He reaches people in church. 
he shook them with care. They out one man, turned their tables out. He said, this house, the body of Christ must be a temple for prayer, not a place for trading. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Look at some say, are you here? You've gone home. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Some say, with all your heart. I didn't say here. You say, with all your heart. Say it again. <laughs> are you sure? Look at some, are you sure you trust him with all your heart? No, we trust him. We said, when it comes to marriage, Lord, I don't trust you. Your, your formula is outmoded. When it comes to marriage, whether God will like it or not, it is taste and see the Lord is good. I will taste. If I don't taste, I'll marry. God, I don't trust that formula. It is outdated. It is every year who is saying it. If Jesus was alive, we change that formula. You are too wise. You are very, very wise. You have to pay your tithe 10%. You bring 2.5%. He said, God, if he understands, of course, you trust the Lord with all your heart. Oh, I surrender all. I said, my boyfriend. I surrender all, not my money. All to thee, man. Bless the Savior. I surrender. Nobody saw it. Yes. You don't have capacity. You don't have capacity. Because God wants you to have built your title level to a certain level. By now, your title level to the kingdom should have been $100,000 based on how much you have accumulated. So that your heaven should open to a million dollars. But because you are not faithful, your capacity is still very low. But you know what is taking your capacity very well? You have a lot of clothes. Use the clothes to prosper. I was talking to a man of God who was complaining to me. He was very sad. <laughs> and he was like, ah, God has blessed you since you came here right now. Look at how God has made the ministry. Look at what you are building. I laugh. I said, you think I just came? I said, when did you start church? He said, about 11 years ago. I said, wonderful. Then Pastor Victor came. I said, Pastor Victor has been following me more than you. I started 1990. <laughs> Then God has not been faithful. I said, yes, I'm, if you look at this building in 1995, I'm not, I've not gone too far. You see, the problem is that there is nothing that God cannot do because the cattle of the thousand on the hills, thousand he belongs to God. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Everything you need, God has it. But why would he give it to you? Because you don't have what it takes to handle it. So Jesus said, when I go, I have to bring you the helper. Because when he comes, he will help you. And he will be with you. But you see, the one to help you. So that you will have what he, he, he wants to give you. You don't acknowledge him. And you don't have him with all your heart. He said, trust the Lord with all that. And lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways. If you are going to be with you, you must acknowledge him. Be with you. Even to bob your hair, you must acknowledge him. Look, that is the extent to which you acknowledge God. You acknowledge God until it becomes a formula in your brain. <laughs> Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my word or you keep my commandments. Now, if let's take it that I'm a man of God, I tell you do this and you do it. If there is trouble because I told you to do it, I'm going to be responsible for the trouble. But if you you decide to do something, you are going to be responsible for your trouble. In that sense, if God is the one who directed you to do something, then he becomes responsible for whatever you go through. Then he has the right to take you out. But if you make the decision and you get into it, and you say, oh God, save me, you are in trouble. Friday, I was teaching those who became leaders. Jesus told Peter, come! And Peter was coming. So when he began to sink, and he told Jesus, don't you care that I perish. Instantly, Jesus carried him out from the water because I told you to come so you can't sink. You go and walk on water. Even when Jesus has not told you to walk and see if, if you sink, you call him, he will come. You will go down deep. So, but I read it in the Bible. I've seen men of who try that nonsense and they sink. Somebody told me, I'm going to do 40 days and 40 nights dry fasting. I said, let me tell you the truth. Anybody who did 40 days and 40 nights, is the Lord who asked him to come. So but when they got there, they had supernatural energy. Don't try fasting without three days, without water, you will die. And one week without food, you will die. And when you go to heaven, God will knock you for, for, for foolishness. He didn't ask you. You, you, were, you were too envious, too jealous. You, you are evilly provoked. Read your Bible. The people who did 40 days, there are only a few. 
And most of these people, the Lord told them to come. My dear power. I think I'm not preaching well. <laughs> he will direct your path. So many people don't have their path directed. They don't know what to do in life. They get a certain junction and they know what to do. God opens a door for you. You get into the door and now you need to still depend on him. You are depending on your strength. And you are depending on your energy. Very soon the thing vanishes from you. And let me tell you, when that thing happens, I was, I was teaching and I said that you cannot put new wine into an old wine skin. It will burst. Do you remember? So every new wine must desire a new what? Wine skin. Every new level you must go into, you need to develop a certain part of you to meet that level. If you don't develop that part of you, that new level will kill you. So he is, back to John 14, so he is with you as long as you will acknowledge him. The Bible says that no one calls Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't hear you. Jesus is Lord. So do you know why do you say Jesus is Lord? The Holy Spirit is, if you, do, if you do one day, I'll do an experiment for you. When we are casting out a demon in somebody, I'll try and ask the person, say Jesus is Lord, he can never say it. No demon can ever say Jesus is Lord. They will never say it. They know, but they will never say it. So knowing and not saying is a, is a statement. I will repeat it. Knowing something and not saying it is a statement. Oh, I should, let me give another, another Bible verse to convince you about it. With a heart, we believe unto righteousness. But with a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Believing something makes you right with a person. But saying it makes you get what a person has. Same say he must be with me. So Joseph gets into Potiphar's house. The Lord was with him. In prison, the Lord was with him. Why? He even in every circumstance he was in, he was applying the principles that God gave him. So I was talking about people. So here am I. I talk to you, you don't listen. I tell you what you do, you don't mind me. Then sometimes um, you get I have people in this church who sometimes say this thing like they had a dream. In the dream, they mentioned my name and demons left. They said, in the name of F.T. Yali, and the demons left. And I read the Bible in Acts, and the Bible said, God, the demons said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know. Like, the demons recognize certain people that they recognize. Now, so let me give an example. If Jesus talks to you, do this, and you don't do it, when you call on his name, it doesn't work. Because you did not acknowledge him when he's with you. Are you here? You've gone home. You didn't acknowledge his. You go there and tell me that Jesus sent me. How did you come? Am I talking to somebody here? Now, when he's with you, he takes you to the next level, which is he comes into you. Somebody say, into, into you. I didn't hear you say, into me. So the Bible said in John, verse, and I will pray the Father, He will be that He may abide with you forever. Then He said, Then let's go there. But the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Worldly people, let me tell you, if you are worldly, you can't receive Him in you, He will be with you. Worldly. Demands forsake ministry because He loved the world. Some of us, we are so worldly, so canal. If you like playing worldly music around you, Holy Ghost can't stay within you. Watching porn, Holy Ghost can't stay within you. If your imagination is calm now, you see, I was teaching and I said, Listen, the Bible said, if you look at a woman twice, double, wanting what is behind the dress. The Bible said you have already committed that adultery. You see, in the world, it is when you take a knife and you kill somebody that the police will arrest you for murder. But in a spiritual world, it is when you think about it. When you think about it, you have done it. 
So the Bible said in um, Genesis chapter 6 and Genesis chapter 8, God said that my spirit will no longer strive with man because man's imagination is evil from his youth. So if your imagination is bad, the Holy Ghost will always be with you but will never come and stay in you. You will never move to the next level of your life. So the next level of your life which your capacity will increase is when the Holy Ghost comes to stay in you. And when the Holy Ghost comes to stay in you, you need a certain level of thinking. Actually, you need a certain level of peace. You need a certain level of joy. One of the things I do very fast, I disconnect for anybody who doesn't make me happy. It's true. This world is so short. And the Holy Ghost, see, the joy of the Lord is a strength. When <laughs> you all get that, I want to jump. I don't want to, I don't want to jump there. If we read Isaiah chapter 60, verse number 5, that if we read the New King James Version, different from the this thing, what they gave us, I said that you had and like the, the writer said that he used the word, well, you need some joy. Can I have it? I just say. Okay, let's read. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall be swelled with what? With joy. You see, when your joy, the level of your joy, determines the level of your, your enlargement. I don't know whether you are, I'll get there. The level of, you see, when your joy is heavy, your heart is expanded. When your joy is low, your heart level is closed. I will get there. So you put that one somewhere. Look at something. Is he in you? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Then, look, a sign that is in you is your thoughts must be pure. Your thoughts must be hot. Pure. Your thoughts must be hot. Pure. Your thoughts must be hot. I didn't hear you. Your thoughts must be hot. P-U-R-E. Pure. And pure it means that it's pure. For you to understand, you must know it's pure water. Pure water is not like tap water. The water has gone to a filtering process. So every particle of bacteria or virus in the water will not get into your body. So when you say your heart must be pure, what it means is anything that will come into your brain to make sure that you are not excited about God will disappear. You cannot have God in you and you're not excited about God. They tell you it is time for service. Hey, God, today too, you don't have him in you. Get up 3 a.m. and pray. Hey, Radi. I see how many days? Three days. Hey. Me, three days. But you can get up and watch movie. Look, anything you are excited about tells me what is your God. If I call you on phone, I say, oh, hmm? huh? okay. And somebody calls you, say, hey, how are you? He speaks volume. That person that you are laughing with, what he says to you will come to pass than me, what I'm telling you. Because you are not excited by what I say. I'll prove it to you in the Bible. Look, I've said it before. Married people who want to have children, if you have sex without excitement, their children will not come. Do, do you know that? Do you know that most of it they will tell me that okay, fine, Kenya, no one is saying. Do you know when you pass the wrong way, there's some excitement about it. Before you meet the person, you think how it will go, how it will happen, you plan and you execute because your body, soul, and spirit is part. But when your husband is coming, say, eh, what's the name? In there, in there, uncle. So your body has done it. Your spirit, your spirit, your soul didn't take part. It's only your body. There is no excitement about it. It's a formula. Principal times three times time is to call to children. So do it, and the child will come. That's where me find chan kitwe bibi kisi ni keke. Mi kisi keke. Only kiss. Is the Orlando family here? Is that what I told you? Where you broke him? I told them that message, enjoy yourself. Ask him. I said, do it with excitement and joy. Be so happy doing it. Ah, the baby came. 
He said, the doctor. I said, no doctor. It's joy. When you, were, when you were dating, when you were dating, you couldn't wait. The way I'll do it, the way, as soon as you marry, the demon has come in there. Like, well, don't touch me, don't touch me. Well, if you want to do, do it, go. Yeah, I know you come and go to first Corinthians chapter 7. Don't defraud each other. So I won't defraud you, so you take it. Eh? I'm preaching, pa. Look. First service example and second service example are different because the congregation here are different. The same scripture but different explanation because I'm hating people's problems. Forgive me. Shut up and do it with joy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But with joy, will you what you will draw from the world? You can't draw anything from God without joy. You can't draw anything from God because joy determines the, the level and the scope of your heart. The energy must be there. That scripture, we, you, you, you draw from the Lord with joy, therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. It takes joy. Disappear from anybody that doesn't give you joy. There was a song we used to sing when we I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul, joy like a river. Let me tell you this. Anything you are doing without joy to it, your spirit is not with it. How do I know if your spirit is not connected? The level of enthusiasm you put to a thing tells me. Hello, can you come? I don't, this is not fate. Let me call any of my pastors to come. And you see the speed in which they will come. And let me call somebody who needs help to come and see if I need help. I called somebody, a big man in Ghana. I said, I, I said, I want to see. He said, I'm coming now. I said, I'm not available. Monday, Tuesday. Man, I, I said, You can't come. I said, Okay. You pray something on me before that time you are giving. You say something. I pray. I said, now I can't wait. Am I teaching here? So Psalm 37 says, delight yourself. From verse 4. Delight thyself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. You are doing things for God, but you are not happy about it. I've served God for years of my life. You don't have capacity. Can I tell you this? If I have to go back to my mother's room and come on this set, I still do God's work. But the only difference is that I don't want to be a pastor. I want to be a media man. But behind the scenes, the only, being public is too troublesome. I, it's something you need a private life. The media man, they can wear jeans and go and sit in the studio. You have to always dress. I mean, I mean. Delight! They said, read Psalm 119. Say, hey! Pastor, can you make it Psalm 23? So you know the one that can help you. Yeah, you go and check Psalm 119. Verse 119. Verse 128. Hey! Pastor, they call the pastor again. Pastor, hey, wow. <laughs> so 
So, Pastor, can you, if you can't make some, can you make it some 91? That one is even in my head. He that dwells in the secret place to him, I can't recite it. The most pathetic thing, as doctors, is when a patient comes to you and tells you what's wrong with you. Um, I have this problem, so I took this medicine, and I've taken this medicine, and I don't know whether you recommend this medicine. Then why are you seeing a doctor? You have the answer already. Why are you sitting here? And that's why sometimes we behave in the sight of God. Delight yourself. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within the gate of Jerusalem. I was glad. You, you are sad. When worship comes, stay service tomorrow. Say, God. Pastor, if you give us a leave, nine you won't leave in service. When your devil is working 24 7. What look, let me tell you this. I've said it before. Do you know why people employ more people? How many people have you employed in your company? About 30. Why will you employ 30? You know why you are paying them? You are buying their time because you don't have time to do all that in a short time. So anybody who employs people is because they don't have more time. Some of the things you put, if you have time, you do it yourself. But you can't multiply yourself so you get more people. Let me tell you this. The, the, take your the truth is that the devil you are dealing with is a full time. You can't use part time to defeat him. A full time devil. Look, the devil intention assigns this person to you. Yours is to make sure that this person doesn't succeed. Yours is to make sure that this person doesn't marry. Yours is to make sure that this person doesn't go to church. And they are full time working on pay. Delight yourself in there so that it will give you what? So your desire is not happening because there is no delight. So today is the day. What is it that I'm going to sing? Is is an honor, Lord, to stand and worship you? It's an honor. It's a, sometimes the reason why I cry when I'm worshiping is that who am I? I don't qualify. Ah! Who am I? It's, it's an honor and a privilege. Somebody came to me and said, The man of God, I want to work for you. I said, I don't pay. So I'll pay myself and I'll pay you. I said, Ah! He said, No, no, no. What I will learn by being around you, I can never pay for. I will pay you. Delight thyself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Your, your heart is not receiving kapato kata jenke lor makuba ketebe. They say that when I ask, you will give me whatever I desire. Yes, it's true, but your, your delight is wrong. You delight in watching football. Watching porn, going to funeral. I was telling a man who came to me, he was talking. I said, Can I tell you what has killed the anointing? He said, Man of God, I know. I said, well, How do you know? He said, When I came for the conference, you were teaching, and when you taught from Ezekiel 44, he said, A pastor, an anointed person, doesn't go near dead bodies. He said, I don't know what happens to me. Every week I was going near dead bodies, watching dead bodies. Then I said, Why did you do this? He said, I don't know. But my father, my father, who was a traditionalist, said this to me. And when he said it in the Bible, I believed it. He said, whenever we go to funeral, when you come, you don't take the funeral address to the room. You leave it outside and watch it before you enter the room. I said, why do you think he did that? He said, he said, you carry spirits at funeral. I said, very true. A lot of people, you carry demons when you go to funeral. You to funeral is your assignment. My sister's cousin's neighbor's friend's sister. You cried and they bereaved. I 
I've realized it. It is when I came to your conference that I realized that this has been my problem. I asked him a question. Do you know that when redeemed, his son died, he himself didn't go to the funeral. He did the distant life. No comment. There are spiritual things you understand. But in the Bible, this if you go to a funeral, you come, you must stay out of God's work for like seven days. You, you are more than the person who has fornicated because when you fornicate, at least you must stay three days out of God's service. I do you. If you insult your leader in your head, you must be out of service around you for seven days. Now, I should give you an example in the Bible. In the Bible, more. How you deep out? You are reading your Bible. People send you text messages. Then you are laughing. <laughs> What's up? My friend, he's a rich in five days. <laughs> he says, I should come. When? Next year. <laughs> what is on your phone? Not this church people. They just told me feel some miraculous next week. I don't even know if I can go. a donkey nor a horse. It is when a horse and a donkey meet and they produce a mule. A mule can give birth. But mules are when donkeys and horse meet. And God gave a specific don't bring a mule around me. How come? Because it's either you are a donkey I don't know if you are excited about God. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I, sometimes I'm there. These days, I hardly have people like that to share with me. I'm there and I'm there and I get a revelation and I'm shouting. I can call people and say, hey, can I see what God is telling me? And when you tell somebody and I say, eh, okay. Mm, I don't, they are not excited. So I stop sharing. Well, let me tell you this. I, you hear God give you a scripture. Like I, I was telling the first thing, I have a big problem. I've been talking about it to God. It's almost three years. A big problem. About ministry, church growth. And I've heard it. I've seen it. But yesterday, around is it 10, 11, God led me to the answer. Oh, so this pastor did it, and that's how the ministry expanded. So, God, we're telling me uh, I was not listening. This little thing is that things of God are so simplicity that you can take it for granted. I said, Ah, and normally, if I get some of the things, you know what I do. I have senior pastors' platform, pastors' platform, and some platform. I will share it on you. But at first, I didn't share because when you share, people will say, "Time's up." Received. You know this one. Thank you. And you expect that when you see them, they say, "Man of God, the revelation." I say, so you also saw it. Huh? You see them? Say they do watch. Uh, yeah, you see. Uh, then they change the topic. I said, oh, good. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. And 
when you begin that your delight in the things of God is moving away, you know that the Holy Ghost has stopped staying in you. It's moving out to be with you. If we in the book of Isaiah, I said, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Why would you hear a voice behind you? Because you don't have the Holy Ghost in you. Because when you have the Holy Ghost in you, he doesn't speak to you. He speaks through you. I've been asked several times by people that, eh, man of God, how do you see? And I tell them, I don't see, I know. One plus one. Two plus two. Did you see four or you know it's four? You know. That's how I also know. When you are talking, I know this one, it won't work. I just know. I know you are lying. I know you are hiding things. I know, but I don't have proof. And as long as I don't have proof, I become blinded to that area. And sometimes when I see my confidence level in that area drops. Why does it drop? Because I asked you and you said it's not true. So if it's not true, everything I'm seeing there cannot be true. I close my mind there. But the result will show very soon. And when the result comes, I might not be able to do anything about it because it's gone. As Tony will tell you that, as Tony will tell you, when you see daddy talking about something to you, call you and talk to you about something, don't joke with it. As if it's a joke. No, don't, you know, it's, not, it's not when I call you, said, when I call you at like this in church, it's not as powerful like when we are talking on the way. And say, eh, is that so? And as if I'm joking, we are talking. Let me tell you something about God. There is nothing like joke when it comes to God. You don't joke with the things of God. Because life is so precious that if you misdirect somebody's life, that could be the end of the person. So I don't take people's life for granted. You are quite proud. The, the prodigal son, his delight in the things of his father had dropped so wayward, so backward, that he now desired the food of pigs. When he was backsliding, he didn't even see he was backsliding. When he was poor, he didn't even see that he was poor. When things were going by, he didn't even feel that things were going by. Until one day he woke up and saw Pluto, big food. Then he had appetite. Ah, it's nice, oh. Hey, how can you desire food of pigs? When you realize that your desire for certain things has disappeared, now you are dead. Lately, you've been smelling beer, bellies, smell of. When you see that, you say, buy one, get one free. Every woman you see passing, you can imagine. Is he wearing bula pant? Or pantless? Or wearing jean string? You are imagining. So you can imagine, imagine. Your desire is going where what? You can't even dream about your vision. You can't even sit and imagine. How would I make it in three years? You are desiring panties. I'm not, I'm not, I am preaching. Now you see ladies and you want to smooch them. You are a lady and you want to smooch a lady. When you see another lady, you are watching the lady sleep and you say, this is kiss our boy. A lady! I'm preaching. As I'm preaching. And the spirit of lust is so dangerous, eh? Because lust controls your imagination. Lust of the flesh and lust of the eye. It is something nobody sees, but God judges. Because you you might lust after a thing, but never go for it physically. So nobody knows what you are thinking in your head. But you have removed the man of God's dress already, and the man of God is naked in your brain. You see a lady standing here singing before the lady finished singing. You didn't hear anything. All that you did was that you have undressed the lady. I think I'm not preaching at all. Then the lady doesn't know what your brain has calculated. 
by the spiritual realm, God said, my spirit will no longer stay in you because your imagination is evil. Look at somebody say, I'm sure Pastor is talking about you. Don't pretend you are not here. He's talking about you. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When I see that you are not bringing people to church, I start suspecting your imagination. Yeah. That is true. It's either the souls you are bringing, you are... Yeah. Now you are you are choosing souls according to your taste. And the lady you brought to church is somebody you wanted to date, not to God. So when the lady came and the lady decided to be friends with somebody, since that day, you decided not to bring anybody to church. Because the truth is that you do win a soul to God. You use the soul winning to win a girl for yourself. You went and said, praise the Lord, I will give your life to Jesus. But it's not Jesus. <coughs> it wasn't Jesus. It was a way to win a girl. So you use the Lord's name in vain to win a girl. Now the girl doesn't like you, so you don't longer do so winning. We thought you were so winner, but now we know you are a womanizer. Hey! When you meet them, what do you talk about? That they are not following the church. What do you talk about? Delight yourself in the Lord and you give you the desires of your heart. Give you the next verse, verse 5. Commit thy way. When it's in you, you commit your way to him. You wake up in the morning, Lord, what do you want us to do this morning? You talk to him. So the Bible says men ought to pray and not to faint. Of course, you are not going to be able to kneel down every day. I was teaching earlier and I said that intercessory prayer is to bind demons and break the ways for somebody. But when you are talking to God, it cannot be loud. When you are talking to God, when you are stirring yourself up, it can be very loud. But someone who is staying in you, you whisper, lovers don't shout. Lovers whisper. And ladies, you know this, you can even see a man who is after you when the man's voice changes from loud to bass and yet soft. Guy, ladies, is it true? It's not true. All of a sudden, you know that mm, that guy is moving away <laughs> from the bar was shout on the Have you eaten anything? First, ah, have you eaten? And the voice, that bold man, the voice has become like a baby. Guys, you didn't know that ladies can see that one. That's when they know that if they don't leave this room. <laughs> Just your voice alone. And I'm saying that when you see somebody always talking to you and he shout on top of his voice, it's a sign that even though you are close to that person, the person is in the spiritual realm, the person is far away. So the person feels that the only way he can get to here is shouting. Are angry, they shout because when you're angry, there's a wall that comes between you and people, so you feel they are not close, they are standing in front of you, but you want to shout because in your spirit realm, they are too far away. So, anytime somebody shouts now, you one of the best thing to do is to move far so they can hear well because when you are close, you can't also hear when anger. Ah! So, why are you going? I want to hear you well. Because the next thing is a slap. <laughs> to comprehend. <laughs> commit their ways. So when he's inside you, you commit your ways to him. You commit your ways. Lord, what do you think I should do today? 
trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. So you trust him, Lord. I don't know how to get this thing done. Not that when Moses met God, somebody was mighty words and did 40 years of being in the wilderness. When God, I'm sending you to um, back to Egypt, he said, Lord, what should I say? Eh? You are a man of speech. Say, so what do I say? What do you want me to do? Saul met God. He said, what do you want me to do? You, they already know what to do. You already know. Sometimes you know. But let me tell you this. Even though you know, in you acknowledging him makes him know that you trust him. You know what you should do. But it's not, I gave an example in the first service. Sometimes I, I was saying that Pastor Charles is traveling to Kumasi. He's a man of his caliber. He can travel and go. God will protect him. He becomes a man of God. I'm going to Kumasi. And I'm like, hey, okay, God take you and bring you back. Why is he telling me? He just wants me to acknowledge that he's traveling. Not that he needs anything. But when you give God that kind of, God, I'm going to town, what do you say? God, I'm doing this. What do you want me to do? It's inside you. So you know, like, you go down your knees and say, Lord, our Father. You say, I should pray, our Father, first who are to heaven, hallowed be your name. Then you pray that kingdom come. No, no. He's in you. So what you do, you talk to him every day. One of the things you hardly see me do, if I know you personally, send you a message. I tell you to do it, but I never do it. Send you a message and say good morning. I never do it. I go straight to the point. Because in a spiritual realm, I'm always communicating with you. If you see me send you a message and say good morning, and I add, a, I say what I'm going to say, I am not relating with you. Hardly. Who, have, who here have you seen me send you a message and say good morning? Because most of you, before I send you the message, I would have taken you to prayer. God, as I've sent it, let it work. And I send it to you. We've communicated. I've greeted you good morning already. And when you have related to people from morning, you don't go and say good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Some of you, your prayer is always good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. When you go to office and greet good morning, the rest is communication. Oh, is it true? It's not true. You will keep talking, you keep talking, you keep talking, you keep talking, you keep talking. But when you come late in the afternoon, before you enter, I say what? Good afternoon. Then when you go, we don't come again to the office and say, good afternoon, sir. Somebody's looking for you. You come and say, good afternoon, will you eat? Good. <laughs> so I try to be formal. No, 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 no. That is, you, are, you have a relationship with him from morning. So what do you do is that you just feel like, Lord, I don't even know what to do. This guy is provoking him. This person is doing this to me. Lord, what will you want us to do about this? Thing? You hear a voice between you say, keep calm. Take this step. Trust also in him. And you'll bring it to pass. So after you have moved him back to John chapter 14, he said that then after he has been with you, then he will come upon you. Some say, upon me. I didn't hear you say upon me. I didn't hear you say upon me. Now, there, if you read Luke chapter 1 verse number 35, you see that Mary was in the room and whilst Mary was inside, an angel appeared. And when the angel appeared, he said, you have found favor with God. You will bear a child and so on and so forth. His name shall be called this. And Mary said to Jesus, to the angel, how can these things be? That is communication. Since I know not a man. Lord, you say I will be this. What do you want me to do? I don't have business partners. I don't have the capital. I don't have the know-how. I don't know what to do again. He didn't want to say, hey, you mean me? I'm going to give up to the Messiah. Okay. Hey. You're fine when you're me. me the God served the other me. The whole world. So I'm the man that God chose to give that to. I'm, I'm good though. So you, you didn't visit my, anybody again. You didn't go to... Um, Matter and all the people you came to me, Mary. Ha! Ah, wonderful. No, no. So how would these things be? My problem is that I don't know what to do. And he said, "Listen to me." He said, and the angel answered. Let's read together. And he answered and said, "What unto her? The Holy Ghost shall come, up, up, upon. He will come where? Now there's a difference between the Holy Ghost with you, the Holy Ghost within you, and the Holy Ghost upon you." He said, listen, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power, because the upon you is what brings the power. I've taught you this before. Listen to me carefully here. Can I have your attention? The one you feel that's, ooh, the presence of God is here, it's not his presence. It's the power. His presence is not felt. His presence is known.
what you feel that you fall under the power is power it's not presence and I'll go there very soon and the angel answered the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the high shower overshadow you therefore also that what is missing is that if the Holy Ghost comes upon you then that which has been said concerning you can then come to pass now how do you get this Holy Ghost upon you hear me if the capacity of the oil in the container is not overflowing there is not enough to give to anybody you can't give what you don't have and if you try to give what you don't have you will die so if a poor this is within this oil there's oil within this bottle right is it true good if I pour some on anybody what will happen what will fill it eh there's no vacancy in the spiritual realm so anytime you use oil you use the anointing within you and you don't even go back for a refuel and refueling comes through prayer What happens is that you realize that I've seen people that I stood here and I ministered. When I finished, I went under attack. You get attacked because you didn't minister from the overflow. You ministered from what is within you. Listen, the overflow is like this: water generates electricity. But the, what they will tell you sometimes is that a consumbo can produce electricity. I've never heard it before because the water level is what low. And sometimes I say, ah, why don't they, oh, everybody should fetch a bucket of water and go and put it inside. Yeah, everybody, fill my cup, Lord. Everybody take something and go and put it inside. It can't happen. They say, they want rain. They want rain. And then time it is not raining, and then we are all going to go through doing so. But when it rains, then sometimes that goes on more flats. So they open and some of the water goes out because if it, they don't also do, they can't get it circulating. So when the anointing overflows, you have no option than to minister to people. You know why it's difficult for you to minister to people? You never have enough to even give. <laughs> Christians of today are prayerless. And yet we have functions in church, so we come. I just want to say Baba then the demons attack you. Before you finish thinking, you have throat problem. You have problem in your body. You go home, it's like they are beating you. The truth is that you don't have overflow. And what you came is that you came to pour yourself on someone. I gave an example in the first service when I said that Elisha, a woman, you see, sometimes that's why you should be very, very careful with gifts and things people give you. It's, they are all bribes. People give us offering, man of God, take it. They are all bribes. You don't know. Oh, man of God, take. Man of God, the Lord has laid on my heart to swear a seed into your life. It's all bribe. You know why it's all bribe? When you receive it, you say, God bless you. <laughs> Something goes away. Oh, God enlarges you. When you give somebody a contract and you put a year friend, say, a check of $5,000 inside, when the person opens, he said, <laughs> You are a good boy. <laughs> you are a good boy. So when you say you want it, is being signed right now. Then you say, sir, um, it's not that, but when we are done, we also bring you your 10%. Ha! You get it right now. Let's go. As you true, it's not true. You've not said anything. You. So, so, oh, you think, is it true, it's not true? Oh, is it true, it's not true? Jacob said, bring me venison that I may eat. I will bless you. He waited. The food was not coming. Somebody went to bring the food. As soon as he ate, he said, take the blessing. The other guy came and said, I've come with your food. So you were too late. My man did that. I'm already full. So Elisha is going his somewhere. Don't write that English. It's no English. He's going his somewhere. And as he's going, a woman says, ah, you are a good man of God. Take bread and eat. Take bread and eat. 
The next time, the woman says, ah, I will give you a place to stay. You keep going and coming. Give the man a place to stay. Elijah, the woman has not told Elijah anything. God has not spoken to Elijah to do anything. God didn't speak to Elijah because there was no anointing upon him. He says, woman, for what you have done, a year by this time, you will embrace a child. Now, did God say you should do it? No. He had an anointing in him. He decided, Elijah was, Elisha did the same thing. Elijah did the same thing. When he said, according to my word, first Kings 17, it shall not rain on this man. He didn't say God told him. He said, me na me see in shown talk. He said it. And he became empty. When the rains came, if you remember, he ran away. He took an angel to come and give him food to eat, to carry him for 40 days because he gave it out of him. Sometimes, we men of God, you can be seeing somebody who's in the panel. Oh, don't know. You like the person. The person is suffering. God's hand is not on the person. But you, out of sympathy, you can go in and do something to make the person well. But from that day, if you don't go and get refilled, you are in big trouble. And unfortunately, if the person doesn't like you, gossips about you, is, is t- and you still do it for the person, you use more oil because the person does not deserve it. Elisha says a year by this time you have a child. God didn't tell him to do it. He used his own anointing. After a while, the, the child grows. He says, my head, my head. If your head is paining him, doctor, what is that? Fever. Uh-huh. Fever, malaria. It can be any of these things. The guy, the baby dies. Headache. You, you, if your head is pain, your body is hot, what will you say yourself? The boy dies. Elisha was praying. He kappa, kappa, was in prayer. And God didn't reveal it because God didn't tell you to, to, to get somebody a child. You use your anointing. It's yours. No, 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 no trouble. It's your anointing. You have generated it. He said, I am in prayer. And God didn't reveal this to me. <laughs> you did it for yourself. And Elijah sent his servant, take the staff. Rule number one, don't talk to anybody. Don't greet anybody. Go straight. Let your eyes be focused. Put the thing on the child and come back. The child will come back. Prophet direction has failed. The servant goes to do it. Nothing works. Elijah said, I will go myself. Go pray for the child. The child will not get up. Lay hands on the child. Anoint the child with oil. The child will not get up. So he lays on the child seven times. And the child sneezed and came back to life. We read on. It's not too long. Elijah himself dies of fever. That's why sometimes people give me things. It lies down for days. I don't touch it. Ask my office where they will tell you. That's why if somebody says, you see money in church, every money that is put in church or a shrine is a transaction. It's a transaction. You see money in church, you pick. You just transacted it. Somebody tells you, some people come to church and somebody tells you, I can't go put this offering in the bowl. You pocket it. Every, every, you see, it's a transaction that the person is showing the money so that God, as I do this, do this for me. As I do this, do that for me. As I do this, take this offering for me. As I do this, so th- there's a transaction taking place. A man of somebody was calling me and told me that eh, he gave somebody a car and when he gave the person a car the person didn't say thank you i said sir did you sow a seed or you gave a car because you told me you sow a seed to the person so i've been praying that the person's anointing will be on you he said i don't even know whether it's a seed or i gave i said no wonder you are not getting blessed because as long as you gave you don't expect anything As long as you give, eh, my, my boss, sorry, may give you some money. You give, no, it must it must be deliberate. I am giving to get good measure, pressed down, 
shaking together and running over. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap up from you. Am I teaching you? Say upon. So the upon works in this way. No, before I come on, this upon works in this way. Let me deal with this one. So when he said the spirit came upon him, if we Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, When the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, something is upon you. Now, the upon is determined by the within. The upon is determined by the within. So when, let me give you an example. I can be here as a man of God. I stand here in the power of God is so thick upon. Because I have a large heart to gather, let's say, 20 billion gallons of oil. So there's an overflow that heals and delivers people. But I have not been praying and spending time with God for a long time. So what will happen is that there will be a lot of bubble. Our people will get their deliverance and their breakthrough. But when I finish, I will see that I am empty. Now, if I don't quickly refill, what happens is that the air and the gas that comes to place very soon, you see that the man of God starts dying. Sickness, disease, poverty, attacks. Why did this thing happen? Because he went within himself to get it. But a man of God who spends time in the presence of God always will have enough overflow. So if you watch it very well, we do Feast of Miracles. We do programs. Come on, don't go. We do Feast of Miracles. We do programs. And we minister. And when we finish ministering, I still go around. I don't know if you have seen me. There's too much. So I was expecting 20,000 people. So I prayed for that kind of level of grace. Only 500 came. So I'm still going around looking for who to lay hands on. And when it doesn't become sufficient, I go home and I began to intercede. The following day, someone will come and tell me, the man of God, you didn't call me during the Feast of Miracle, but when I was asleep, you came to my room and you came to do deliverance for me. You said this and this. How many of you have heard that thing before? Where you are? Please, wave it higher, higher. I came over. God, how did it happen that I came over to your room to do it? Because there is enough to be transacted. It didn't happen within time. But in the spiritual world, there is enough time. But physically, we have to close at 8, so we have closed. But in the spiritual realm, we can still continue doing the administration. That is why sometimes we do a church service and we say we can't close. Because let me tell you, the thing that comes upon, let's say we are doing a service, there's a prophetic unction that comes here. It's upon. But you have set a time that we should close at 12. If you close next week, the upon might not be the same. The in is still the same. But the upon is not the same because the people that gathered here, that drew the anointing, might not be the same. The kind of faith you used to bring to the service is not the same faith you are brought to the next service. So on this day, I still feel the anointing, but the grace to prophesy is not yet upon. Why? Because you were not in it. Am I talking to somebody here at all? So in, in Luke chapter 1, let's look still at verse number 46. Then you should know that Mary had to... <laughs> um, Mary was with the family and they were all gossiping. <laughs> Young girl. You're sure so you're being God I. You are pregnant and you say no, Joseph didn't get you pregnant. We are saying oh, these days, Joseph. I suspect Joseph. Joseph bad, yeah. Looking at what he has done. Joseph really got his lady pregnant. And he went all soft. So Mary was wondering, what should I do? And the Holy Ghost told him, the an angel of God came to him and listen, what you are going through, you need you to go to your cousin Elizabeth. She's six months ahead of you. She's six months carrying your um, something that you, you are about to carry. So Mary goes to meet Elizabeth. And when he meets Elizabeth, let's look at what he said in verse 46 and 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify. Give me the NKG, which will make it easier. My soul has what? My soul magnifies the Lord. That is present tense. I am magnifying the Lord. But look at verse 47. What does verse 47 say? And my spirit has rejoiced past in his salvation. My spirit has what? Rejoiced in his salvation. But now my soul magnifies the Lord. If you have not rejoiced, you cannot magnify. Listen, you are coming to church and you are in the crowd. You are not rejoicing in coming. So when you come here, your magnification of the Lord is not magnified. 
Because I taught you a message it's in my book, Palace Protocol. It happens before it happens. What happened? It happens before what? It happens before what? So your heart's position before a service determines how the service runs for you. Your heart's position. How you feel before. Let me give you an example. If people who know me, work around my office, will tell you that. If I tell you that, if they see me during a service day, that I'm hyper, getting angry, they know that this service is going to be dangerous. I don't like you talking to me. <laughs> I've already seen the service in advance. And I'm expecting something. And during that time, I can be there, I tell you, this person is going to do it. Don't let him do it. This because I've seen the service in, in advance. I've seen that this person will sing this song and share the song. And the whole atmosphere will change. Say, you are not singing. Let this song come on. I've seen the service before the service. And so when I'm taking certain steps, you have not seen the service before the service. Who wonder, what is this person doing? Mary said, my spirit has rejoiced. And my soul, which is the flesh, it's only mag- so most of you come to church and you see that someone is saying, I worship you, Almighty God. It's not true. Your lip is worshiping. Your spirit has not yet rejoiced in the Lord. And I told you that the level of joy, which is like rejoice, is determines the capacity in your spirit. So he said, My spirit has rejoiced past in the Lord. In other words, I have um, um, I have opened my capacity, I've enlarged my capacity in the spirit realm, so that when I come, I just come to magnify the Lord in public. You have not killed a bear, you have not killed a lion, and yet you want to kill Goliath. I was saying it, that if you watch me, you will never see me pray for the sick, pray for people for long. Is it true? It's not true. You will not like it. Somebody came to my office and said, man of God, uh, how are you? I said, fine. Said, Let's talk. Said, Can we pray? I said, I've prayed. So I said, everything. I said, it's important thing that when you come and sit down at the meeting, then you close your eyes and you say, Father, as you have come, no. I have prayed. I have prayed. I'm, I'm in a relationship with God. Let's go on. Am I talking to somebody here at all? We, we have done a lot of things which I call religi- African religiosity. We think about problems than solutions. So when you say, let us pray, the first prayer you want to pray is deal with witches and wizards. When you say, ban, come and see brother man. You say, pray for a solution. Yes. We think about trouble. It's Africanization of, of our Christianity. I can spend hours talking to God. Hours. How many minutes? Hours. But every time let's talk about problems, you don't deal with problems because problems can only be solved when you have generated within you. Because that not that comes upon you comes to solve problems. And let me teach you this. Can I have your attention? The upon anointing works by this way. The company you keep. But if the company you keep is neutral, how many of you know neutral? Electrons. Neutral. The anointing can be diminished. I didn't say this in the first service. First, some much after 10, the Bible said, Saul, as you go, you will meet a company of prophets. Join them. And it shall become another name because the spirit of God will come upon you. Now, when the spirit of God comes upon you, you change to be an ordinary human being to become what God wants you to be. Hey, are you here? You are slept in. I slept in means you slept and slept and overslept. Is I slept in. Never write this English, it is my own English. Read verse 5 said, You would see a company of prophets. So when we come here like this, eh, 
And we all come here with a kind of faith. Lord, today, dear, as I go, dear, as I go to the service, dear, Lord, do this for me. Let the man of God speak concerning me. All of a sudden, there's a spirit that comes upon us. If you come in and there, you don't have any faith. Let's read. And it shall come to the hill of where the Philistines is again. And it shall happen that you, when you have come to the city, that you will meet a group of prophets. You meet a group of prophets. The group will determine the oil that comes upon you. And last week or so, last week, I was talking about the fact that when, what did, did I say it? Last week, I forgot it. When Saul decided to go and look for David, as he went in, he sent soldiers. The Spirit of God came upon them, they changed. Till Saul himself went, the Spirit of God came upon him, he changed. Because the Spirit of God is able to change people's life. I hear me. When Samson, anytime Samson is in the midst of his family and friends, his family, they tied him. He couldn't fight. They put him in the midst of his enemies. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he, what? he defeated them. Now, David said, hey, are you here and gone home? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup runs over. When you are it anointing you, when it means God's will for you, it bubbles. Number two, when it means opposition, it bubbles. When it means people who are something which is there, it's neutralized. So that is why in life you must make sure that the people you are associating with either they are for you or they are against you. Don't look for people who are in the middle because the anointing might not fight for you. They are so dangerous to your life. You didn't hear me. Oh, amen? amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. Say, Lord, I want your Holy Spirit. To come upon me. I didn't say come upon me. I didn't say come upon me. So now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it comes for a specific assignment. Let me tell you this. Nobody can carry the upon for long. You will die. So when the assignment is over, the water settles. The, the oil settles. Something must always stir you. Now, some of the things that can stir the oil in you. Can, can we go on? It's word. Some say word. I didn't hear say word. See, when you, you hear some preaching and the preaching, I don't know. Sometimes you hear the preaching, something tells you stand up. And something tells you don't stand up. You disgrace yourself. Sit. You are stopping the flow of the oil. When you hear a word, the Bible said in Acts one is Acts 10, but give me Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. It said, The Spirit entered into me when He spoke unto me and set me up upon my feet. Everybody hears a word, but you, you feel like standing. I don't know if you heard a preacher, you feel like jumping, clapping, and you are like, want to be civilized. <laughs> Let's read. Then the Spirit, what? Into when He and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. So we hear a word. Those days when I didn't have any real spiritual father, my wife would tell you, I had to buy decoder and get TBN. <laughs> Maybe some of you don't know what is TBN. And there I had all the great men of God in the U.S. were on it. And my favorite program was, there's a program they call Praise the Lord. And they praise the Lord, they bring men of God to come and talk. And I'll tell my wife that this message, this preaching here, I want God to speak to me to end. It will shock you. The preaching they brought, it was that it was ministering to my need. And when they preached and the thing they preached was what I wanted to feel and hear, I can feel in my belly something is tearing up. How many of you have had a preaching tape that you've listened to at least 10 times? a preaching tape somebody has preached and that message you have listened to at least 10 times <sighs> only a few of you that you are not anointed no 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 there are still some message I can't count how many times I've listened to and any time I listen to it this one I was listening to one before I came in 
one of Benin's music. I've listened to that message since 1996. I still listen. I still listen and it's still fresh. I still listen and I still hear things I didn't hear in 1996. The word will not wake you up. Let me teach you something. Maybe you will get it. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon, not within, on. Moved around, moved around. And then God said, The Holy Spirit is the one that enforces what God is saying. And it is not what is within you that enforces. It is what comes upon you. If you won't get this, you get tired of listening to a particular message. Hey. I've read the Bible cover to cover. I still read it cover to cover. Every year I buy a new Bible. This, this is the guitar. So I buy a digital one, every, every, another version, and I read it every year. You buy newspaper and watch CNN and watch how many people are fighting in Ghana. The war of America. You are interested in those ones. And when you hear some of these things, you say, hey, what for phone? Hey, what? Hey? Miss Bell, Miss Bell. Undi, Miss Bell, yeah. Sakodi, Undi, Sakodi, Asamini. Hey, Jones, Jones, I can't say Hey, then you are sharing, you are sharing, you are sharing. Now a preaching message comes. It doesn't stay. You. you know why it doesn't stay you? He is not in you. If he's in you, it will stay you. If he doesn't stare you, he's not in you. If he's in you, he will stare you. Please don't use it for that or thing you do. <laughs> Let me do this thing. Um, F1. Okay. F1. <laughs> F1. Hey, are you a Nigerian? But you understand F1. What does it mean? How are you? You see, you are both in Ghana, Nigeria, Nigeria. Both of you can be in church. One will hear, one will not hear, even though all of you heard. But when I decide to learn, it's an our language. F1, A, one A, A. Mami, F1, A, Nana, F1, A, Uncle, F1, A. So, now it means that he has the spirit of our in him. Yeah. For him to translate it, he has it. Because when you understand a spirit, spirits are languages. So when the Holy Ghost came down, they spoke in a language. So the ability to interpret tongues is, is, a, is a spiritual thing. Because it's a, so the ability to translate a language for you to understand is a spirit. And you got it by associating with certain people that speak that way. The, eh? Your wife? Nah. So a Ghanaian wife has turned you an away. So he has imparted to you. So you have the away spirit in you. You. <laughs> but at the same time, ah, I'm sure you also see that an a can lady. <laughs> That is just by the way. So what I'm trying to tell you is that God can speak. And if the thing doesn't move you, I say it 
Asseyez-vous. Ok, asseyez-vous. Asseyez-toi. Hey, levez-vous. Ok, Samo. Ok, levez-vous. Levez-toi. You see, the truth is that some of you got up, you didn't understand anything. As soon as you saw other people standing, you, you stood up. But those who understood what I said before you joined them, they are broken too faster than you. We all came to church, but this one is breaking too faster than me. This one's understanding is deeper than yours. I like meeting in good congregation because the people around determine the anointing. So when it's an enemy, oh jai. Either they join or they are dead. But when we are together like this, you bring your faith. I bring my faith. I speak the word. And the word enters you. If the word enters you, you get up. If it has entered, that's why when I spoke the language, those who heard it, that is what they put it entered, they got up. Those that the word did not enter, they still sat down. Some too they understood. But Kafungbe, Buddha. Okay, I mean, we know, pa, we know good. Oh, amen. So when the spirit and number two, when God, the word stands the anointing, when God gives you a burden, a burden, the anointing that came on the 70 elders in the days of Moses, they came because they carried a burden. You can never carry an anointing without a burden. It's the burden that takes you into the prayer room. Is the burden that keeps you in the closet. Is the burden. Give me Scotland or I die. This is somebody's prayer. People can be on their knees. Lord, if you don't bring me a revival, take me out of this earth. They kneel down. It's a burden. You do it through this. Carb, I change you, I change you. Carb, I change you, I change you. I change you. I change you. So the pastor, oh, how these people they will not mind you, they are ungrateful. Stop minding them. I know why you are saying that you don't carry the burden I carry. If you carry the burden I carry, you will not say what you are saying. A person who carries a burden is always stirring the anointing within. Most people don't carry any burden. And the worst of it is we make them leaders. Oh, they will kill the system because there's no burden. Oh, amen. amen. Midnight when witches are flying. Shepherd, minister, pastor, you are not. You are speaking snoring tongues. And say, hey, man of God, my church, my basenta, my group, they are not behaving well. They are. You are snoring on them. You snore when witches are blowing. Man, go, man, go, don't go to church. Don't go to church. Don't go to church. Don't mind them. They are deceiving you. They are deceiving you. They are deceiving you. Don't go to church. Don't mind them. Don't mind them. Pastor, too, should pray that the demons attacking the people go. Then your wife will wake you up. You are snoring me. I'm praying. <laughs> Abana resort, a car resort, a bar, a banak, or the school, a low or ya que. Oh, 
Amen. It's a burden. It's a burden. What keeps people longer in the prayer room? It's a burden. Because when the burden comes upon you, Romans 8 20, he said, You don't know how you ought to pray, but the Spirit said, Make us intercession for the groaning spirit can never be uttered. You want to see result. Lord, if this person doesn't change, I can't see it. Is that your child? No. Is that your brother? No. Is that your relative? No. Why is your problem? You have seen a light that must shine over the person's life. You must see what God has taught you. You must come to pass. And you can't just keep quiet. You can't just sleep. It is a bed in your spirit. And most people don't carry burdens. And the Holy Ghost can't trust you with a burden. Because the anointing within, one of the things it does for you, to let the anointing come upon you, that it gives you a burden. That's why you are there sometimes. You realize that you are feeling very bad. I feel so heavy. You don't know what you've done wrong. You've done nothing wrong. But you can't sleep. Then you go and take a sleeping tablet. You sleep. You are sick. Holy Ghost is trying to wake you up. You are sleeping. You are buying sleeping tablet. No wonder your kidney is paining you. You are. He's waking you up to pray. You take a sleeping tablet. So, my dear, you don't break us up. You don't break us up. Because I wish I can come to that place of being sleepless. I wish so. Because some of us, when we start, no, we want to sleep. But you are sleepless. I get you get. Or I get you like in your wire. Oh, amen. amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit begins to feel something, sometimes you are there, you feel sick in your body. It's not you who is sick. Last, I heard Kaya told somebody, and it's very true. Take your seat, Rika, lady. said, in that time, I complained that I'm sick of something. The following week, you see people in church sick of it. And when I take myself into prayer and I get out, people have a testimony. The out of God. When you are a leader of a people, the Holy Ghost makes you go through things that your people must go through. So whenever you start feeling lazy, your people are lazy. When you start feeling like having sex, your people are feeling like having sex. Whenever you feel like you don't have money, your people don't have money. Jesus made God had to come to the earth for Jesus to feel what we feel on earth. So anything we have to feel, Jesus feels it because an intercessor feels what is people feel. If you don't feel what they feel, you can't pray. And if you pray for yourself, you will never get well. You pray, God, heal me, heal me. You will die of that sickness. It's not you. Whenever I don't have money, I know the problem is church members don't have money because you people, you love me too much not to send me momo. Is it true? It's not true. If you have, you give me. And I know. So if I don't have money, it is a sign that the people don't have money. It's a sign. But you, you are, what are you going to do? I'm going to do three days fasting. Why? My doors have locked. You are crazy. Your doors have not locked. Your people's doors have locked. You go and pray for yourself. You get no solution. You don't need to pray for yourself. You intercede. And when you do, the anointing upon you starts coming. And start flowing. You see that people start giving testimonies. And as they are giving testimony, you begin to feel that you yourself, you are relieved. You are free. I'll continue one day. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord. That is why I hear me carefully. Let me say this. Someone getting you are no Holy Ghost. Let me say this. That is why when you see somebody, eh, your leader, going through a process, don't judge. Don't criticize. Because if you criticize, the grace will not save you when it's out. Because a lot of times, what you are going through is because of you. So that when they come out, Jesus told Peter, Satan has wanted to shift you as wheat, but I've prayed to God 
I thought Jesus prayed so Peter would not go through. But I said, when you come out of it, strengthen the brethren. Peter denied Jesus three times. He denied. He didn't, he didn't escape it. He did it. And Jesus said, when you are out, you should say to encourage them. So Peter would be me. I denied him three times. He forgave me. Who are you that he will not forgive? He's been there before. So the Bible says in Galatians that says, if you see anybody caught in the fault, you that are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself lest you fall into it. Sometimes if you have a ministry to intercede for people to get married, you'll never get married. You are still single because you are praying for yourself. What God wants you to do is to pray for those who are not getting married to get married. In you, in you doing that, you too will marry. I'm giving you keys. You are doing fasting, but any witch in my family, the anointing in your life can kill those witches. Jesus had to die on the cross and do things were with you on the cross. One look at you and say, You say you are a man of God, right? You are the son of God. Save yourself and save us. And that guy said, Don't you fear God? This man has done nothing. But it's for our sake that he's suffering on the cross. And he said, Look at him, he said, Today, not tomorrow, you'll be with me in paradise. He says, So soon yet. You are suffering on the cross and you are promising somebody. <laughs> Sometimes it's true. You are, you, you are going through pain and yet you are praying for others. You are sick. You pray for people, they get well. My friend that died, his healing service, people were getting healed, but he died of sickness. But let me tell you, the anointing upon doesn't save you. It saves the people. His anointing within, that only helps you. Let's be on our feet. Are you quiet? Is it a bad message? Hey. Who wants the anointing to come upon him or her? I don't know if you have interceded before. Let me tell you this. Take what I just told you, because it's a prophecy for somebody. For the next three weeks, take it or leave it. The thing you've been praying to God for for your life, that is not happening. Start praying for those who you are pastoring, taking care of, that you are leading, that are going through it. Intercede for them. Intercede for them. Pray for them. And what will happen to you is that once you pray for them, you become freed of it. talk to God, everybody. Keep praying. 